Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. I'm Chanin Nantak Senamat. And on this channel, we cover about data science, tutorials, and concepts. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. And so in this video, we're going to cover about how you can uh, get started using the R programming language. And we're going to start with the fundamental basics. So that will include reading a text file and also writing a text file. And in future videos, we're going to cover more advanced topics. So let's dive in. Okay, so now let's proceed to the next step and let's read in a text file. So let's say that you are starting your data mining project and you want to read in the contents of your text file. So let's, let's show you how, how you can do that. So I'm going to use the Iris data set. So I Google that and I come to the website of UC Irvine. And so the, and then I will click on the data folder. So I'll click on the Iris data and the Iris names. So I'm going to go back to here. files and it goes to the download folder okay so this is the video that I'm filming right now okay so the two files iris names this is the this is the metadata which contains the details of the data set and so the data set as you can you might recall from our previous uh, video about how you can build your first data mining model using uh, the week up program so um, in here you're going to see that there's a total of five var variables so four will be the independent variables which will be your input variable uh, they are the characteristics of the flower comprising of sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the class which there are a total of three types of flower uh, the iris citosa, the iris versicolor and the iris virginica and in the iris dot data it's going to contain the actual data and so there's a total of 150 flowers which will span 150 rows and since there is a total of five variables um, you're going to have uh, five values separated by commas so think of comma as like a column in an excel file so you will in, in this data, you will have kind of like five columns of your data uh, with the first four columns being the characteristics of the flower and the fifth column will be the property uh, that you want to predict. So it's going to be the class label, which is the flower type, which can have a value of the iris citosa, iris virginica, and iris versicolor. So let's get back to reading in the text file using R. And so let's start by reading contents of the iris data. And currently it is residing at the uh, downloads folder. So it's going to be in here. But notice that this is the, the path or the location in which the console, the R console here, the, the terminal of R that you see here, is currently at the home directory, which is shown by the tilde. So in order to get here, you want to, the other thing is, if you read in a file in the present folder, the R program that will not see these files. So what you want to do is you want to change the path so you want to set the working directory to the source file location, which will be where sandbox.r is residing, which is in the home downloads folder. And it is the same folder where the iris data is also residing. So we're going to type in, or we're going to click on to source file location. 
And so notice that this becomes downloads. And so actually you could also type in set WD and then quotation, open and closing quotation, and inside you type in utility slash downloads. And actually you could copy this and then you just you just paste it at top at, at the top of your file and in the future you could just set it and forget. And it'll automatically go into that folder on your behalf when you run it, the whole entire code. So you could just you know select all. Uh, what I would do is on the keyboard, control A, press and control A and then click on run or control enter and then the entire code will be run in one go. Okay, so let's move to the next step and let's read in our text file. So we want to read it in and then we're going to put it into, let's call it Iris. And then we're going to read in the CSV content of Iris data. Iris data. Control enter. So notice that a new object, data object is created here called Iris. And if you click on it, it contains the uh, the contents of the iris.data file. As you can see, when you click on it, it invokes the command view, right? If I click it again, right? The command view will come up again. Or I can even, you know, type it in here manually, iris, and then same thing. Okay, so here you will see that uh, the first row will be read as a header and then there will be 149 rows left but in reality there's supposed to be 150 rows so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say header equals to false because if you go to help and notice that header is one of the option and it, we need to say false And let's see what happens. When Heather becomes false, then the first row will not be read as a Heather row. So they're not detected as the column names. And so there will be 150 rows. So how do you go about uh, creating the column names and adding it to there? to the variable, well, let's say that you have like this, names and then iris, and then you want to type in uh, a vector, and then sepal, I think it's sepal length and width, if you click down the, the names, iris.names, so yes, the first variable is sepal length here, and then the second will be sepal width, and then the pedal length, and then the pedal width. So sepal length, sepal length, and then sepal width, and then the pedal length, and then the Flower. Control Enter. Type in Iris. View uh, capital V. V I E W and then Iris. Oops, not Enter, but Control Enter. And so here we have it. Uh, the name of the columns have now been revised. So we want to save it, Control S. So we have this Iris data object right here. So one neat thing that you can do in, in R is you could type in Iris, right? Let's say that I want the first position. I'm going to type in, as I've shown you previously, Iris and then bracket one. 
I'm going to get the first column, right? Sequel length. And I could do the same thing for the second one and third one. Oops, this should be a bracket. Control enter. Right? And etc. Or instead of one, I could type in the name of the variable that I want. I could type in iris. And then let's say I want the sepal length. So I could type it in directly. Right? If I press enter here, then I got the, the sepal length. Right here. This is the command that I typed. Right, I, I clicked on the control enter. And so here it is. Sepal length is returned. Let's try iris and then the class. Control enter. Here you go. I got the class. Okay, very neat function. And this will come in handy in the future. Okay. So the next thing to do is you want to write the output of this data frame into a file. So how can you do that? Okay, so let's Use the write.csv command. And so we're going to type in iris. And then we're going to type in the name of the file. We're going to say iris.csv. And then we have this iris csv coming out. I think it's easier to just go to the uh, folder and just double click on it. Okay. Okay, here you have it. A text file containing the CSV. Okay, so however, there's this column in front. The, the ID number. So let's see, I don't want the ID number. How can I do that? Let's go to help. Let's type in right dot CSV So that's gonna be the I think it's the role names right here role names I'm gonna have it false because the role name will be here let me show you it's this one this is the role names so it's coming out here one, two, three, four, five. So I don't want that. So I'm going to type in row names, row dot names equal to false. Control enter. Let's see what happens. Did this solve my problem? Okay, it did. So we have a working rs.csv file, which we can subsequently use in future videos to build a data mining model and so we're gonna start slowly and in future videos we're gonna cover more more topics so please stay tuned and please feel free to uh, drop your comment down below what kind of topic you would like to learn about and uh, if i can i'll try to uh, create a video about it thank you for watching please like subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.